Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Number 10. Pan and the Devil Pan was many things to the Greeks. He was a shepherd that was half man, half goat, and a deity of nature. But one thing he wasn't was the devil. Pan was one of the more interesting Greek characters. He was technically considered a god, often associated with lust, and he was relatively good-natured. Many artistic representations show Pan as a musical character often playing the flute. And even though these days Zeus, Hades, or Poseidon might be the fan favorites of the ancient Greek pantheon, actual ancient Greeks had a special place in their hearts for Pan. It wasn't until around the year 300 AD that the demonization of Pan began, and he slowly transformed into the Christian devil. It's believed that more dedications have been found to the god Pan than any other Greek god, and this was most likely what led to the demonization of the figure. When Christianity began to spread through Europe, they continually had to deal with problematic pagan beliefs, and many of these pagans held Pan in extraordinarily high esteem. When the Roman Catholic Church was established officially in 325 AD, Pan transformed from a nature god to the great adversary. And because he already had horns, people started to associate them with devil horns. More and more of Pan's features were incorporated into the devil, mostly his goat parts, until they were nearly indistinguishable. Number 9. The Adoption of the Devil Here's something you might not know about the devil. He is nowhere to be found in the Jewish Bible. Even though the demonic lord of the underworld is a staple in traditions from Judaism to Islam, he showed up pretty late in the ancient world. He didn't begin his evolution until the Persian Achaemenid Empire in 550 BC and was quickly adopted by the Jews under Persian rule. The name Satan comes from two Jewish words, Ha meaning the, and Satan meaning opposer. They called him Ha Satan, the opposer. So here's where the devil actually originated. Ever since humans began dreaming up religious systems, they had rules surrounding good and evil. Usually gods were responsible for the good and the evil in nature, as even God declared control over both prosperity and suffering in Deuteronomy. In Mesopotamia, gods were both good and evil and had created humans merely as slaves for sacrifices. But in Israel, they worshipped a god of utter benevolence. He had a divine plan and everything he created was good, and so they needed something to explain why there was evil in the world if God didn't create anything bad. The result would be the devil. However, the devil grew and took many forms. In Judaism, Satan is not considered a sentient being, but as a simple metaphor for the evils that exist inside of all humans. While in Christianity, Satan is the fallen angel who resides in hell. Number 8. Cult of the Horned Deities Before Satan, there was Pan. But Pan was not the only ancient deity with devilish or demonic features. All across the globe, from Europe to Asia, there have been cults of horned deities. In Egypt, Hathor was the horned cow goddess, dating all the way back to the First Dynasty. She represented the sky, had a direct relationship with the sun god Horus, and was often depicted with a pair of horns protruding out of her head. And then, also in Egypt, there was the cult of Apis, with Apis being a bull deity. The cult was so serious about Apis that they chose the most perfect bulls from the country to actually keep inside of their temples, where the bulls lived until they died of natural causes. They were then embalmed and turned into mummies. There was even a living bull worshipped called Mnevis, which was supposed to be the embodiment of Atum Ra. Egypt had a lot of different bull entities, a lot of different gods with horns, and a lot of different cults to worship them for nearly 5,000 years. And then we can move on to the Canaanite deity named Moloch, which is actually discussed in the Bible. This is yet another deity depicted as a bull, supposedly worshipped by the Canaanites as a god of child sacrifice. The Bible even has the golden calf, which is worshipped by the Hebrews in Egypt. There's the god Ammon in Greece, connected to the oracle of Ammon and depicted with spiraling bull or goat horns. Baal Hamon was a ram-shaped oracle god of the Phoenicians and Carthaginians and was worshipped by Libyans. A proto-Shiva figure was worshipped in ancient Pakistan with a set of horns. Everywhere you look in the ancient world, gods had horns. 
You can see how the Christians associated these false idols with their new devil 2,000 years ago. Number 7. The Origins of Demons Demons did not originate in the Bible and were hardly things born of Christianity. In fact, demons actually go back to ancient Greece, as many things do. There were the eudaimon, which were considered good spirits, and then there were the kakodaimon, which were considered bad spirits. Technically, both were the first kinds of demons. Demon comes from the word daemon, meaning divinity. Demon is also an old Greek word that means replete with knowledge. In Greek mythology, the good demons are guardian spirits, which would either bestow protection upon a hero or offer guidance as they went about their journey. They could perform the task of counselor, whisper advice into somebody's ear, like an angel in one ear and a demon in the other, and they were considered fortunate things to have in your company. Even Socrates claimed that during his lifetime he had a demon whispering warnings in his ear whenever he thought about making a bad judgment. Socrates also claimed that his own personal demon was more reliable than reading the entrails of a dead animal for divination purposes. With the rise of Christianity, the demon spirits of ancient Greece were transformed into something more sinister, and over the centuries turned into the demonic minions of Satan himself. Number 6. Zeus and Hera in Genesis There is a theory which suggests that Adam and Eve were actually copied versions of Zeus and Hera from Greek mythology. Zeus was the king of the gods, and Hera was his wife. In fact, they share quite a few similarities with Adam and Eve in the book of Genesis. For example, Eve is described in the Bible as being the mother of all humans, while Hera is described by a 6th century BC poet named Alcaeus as the mother of all. She was worshipped by the Greeks as the goddess of marriage, the first mother, and the goddess of childbirth. Here's where it also gets quite interesting. Eve was supposedly created using Adam's rib. She was a part of him. In Greek mythology, Zeus was originally named Dios, the Spanish word for God. Hera was named Dione, the feminine version. This suggests that in the beginning, Hera was actually a part of Zeus, making them one single entity just like Adam and Eve. Zeus was also referred to as the father of men and gods. The rest of the two myths are quite different. In the Greek version, the taking of the fruit from the gods was a triumphant and liberating thing, which brought mankind to enlightenment. Whereas in the Christian version, taking the fruit brought evil into the world and cast the pair out of the Garden of Eden. Still, the characters appear to be almost a perfect match. Only the Greeks did it first. Number 5. Bess and the Devil The Egyptian god Bess was undoubtedly yet another motivation behind the appearance of the Christian devil. The Christians took inspiration not only from the horned gods of the European pagans, but from the Egyptians across the Red Sea as well. But remember, in Egyptian terms, a demon could be a good or bad entity. Although he was associated with the Christian devil, many people believed he had the powers of a god, including super strength, longevity, and resistance to harm. Bess was quite popular in ancient Egypt as an every man's kind of god. He was worshipped in homes and associated with all of the best things in life. He was the favored god of people who enjoyed a bit of promiscuity, people who drank to excess, people who were generally merry, and people who liked to listen to music and dance. He can be found in countless examples all across ancient Egypt, and he looked a lot like Pan from Greece, except uglier. He was typically depicted with his tongue sticking out, his beard ending in thick pointy spirals, a tail swinging between his legs, and a particularly grotesque expression on his face. He sort of looked like a dwarf, one who had something mischievous on his mind. Just from these characteristics, you can see where the inspiration for some of the devil's attributes came from. Number 4. Christianity and the Viking Gods Something that's always baffled historians is just how quickly the pagan Vikings accepted Christianity. It happened very quickly, almost without any hesitation at all. The Vikings started pillaging the coastlines of Europe as far as Britain around 793 AD and were almost totally Christian by the time the Viking Age was finished in 1066. The Vikings had started out with their own mythology involving Thor, Asgard, and the Nine Realms and ended with total acceptance of Jesus Christ. This included most of the Vikings who had settled in Christian lands in Normandy, Ireland, and the British Isles. 
But why did a group of bloodthirsty raiders so easily submit to the will of the Christians? Some historians suggest it had to do with the amazing similarities between Jesus and Thor and Satan and Loki. And that's not all. One of the earliest warrior gods in the world was Yahweh, the Hebrew god worshipped by the Jewish people starting around 300 BC. Some historians believe that Yahweh may have been a template for Odin, the mightiest god in Norse mythology. Jesus very easily made sense to the Vikings as an equal to Thor, who was Odin's son as Jesus was God's son. The Valkyries were very easily translated to divine angels. And then there was Loki and Satan. These two deities drew the closest parallel between both religions. Loki and Satan were both banished from their respective heavens, and they brought mischief and evil to the world of the mortals. They were both shapeshifters, and they were both kind of demonic. And so, for all of these similarities, it makes sense that the Vikings were quick to adopt Christianity. Number 3. The Devil's Bible it's worth mentioning a strange medieval manuscript that goes by the name of the Devil's Bible. It's officially called the Codex Higas, but got its more sinister title from the fact that it has a gigantic picture of the devil in it, and nobody has any idea why. The book was crafted by hand in the 13th century in an isolated monastery located in Bohemia, which is now the country of Czech. It is one of the largest known medieval manuscripts in the world, containing a whopping 320 vellum sheets. Eight of the pages were removed, and no one knows what was on them. Historians believe they likely contained some of the monastic rules of the monastery. The book weighs a whopping 165 pounds. That's way bigger than any dictionary you might have lying around your house. The Devil's Bible contains the entire Latin Vulgate version of the Bible except for two main parts. It's missing the Book of Acts and the Book of Revelation. What it does have is a gigantic illustration of the devil randomly stuffed into the book. This thing has horns, chicken legs and claws, and an evil green face. We don't know why the monk added this to his massive Bible around the year 1229, and it's been a source of mystery ever since. Number 2. Mara the Evil One Buddhism made its appearance on the world stage about six centuries before Christianity, and yet Buddhism has its very own devil, and his name is Mara. He is the representation of all evil, sin, death, and temptation. He is also closely connected to one of the most wicked demons in all of Indian mythology, Namuche. The fact that Buddhism has its very own Satan just like Christianity shows just how closely linked all of these religions really are. Buddhism preaches enlightenment through the abolition of selfishness and a total and unflinching love toward all creatures. And yet even the Buddha himself recognized the existence of evil. And to make sense of this evil, Mara was created. To a Buddhist, it's actually the selfishness of man himself which is evil, or their version of the devil. And to submit to that selfishness and revel in self-gratification is itself hell. On the other hand, heaven is the enlightenment of the soul which one experiences on earth. Mara, who came far before the devil, was believed to be the personification of humanity's inner evil. He was described as the tempter, or he who fulfills desires. These are names that the devil himself was given by the Christians. Number 1. Phosphorus the Morning Star The name Lucifer has its origins in ancient Hebrew and sort of in ancient Greece. In classical Greek mythology, Bosphorus is the name of the morning star, meaning the planet Venus at dawn. Bosphorus was depicted as a man bearing a torch. Pretty much all throughout Greek mythology, Bosphorus was only mentioned as the heralder of the dawn. He was the light bringer. And that brings us to the next part. In Latin, the word Lucifer translates to morning star. In the Hebrew version of the King James Bible, the morning star was translated as Lucifer. This is all fairly simple. Phosphorus was a Greek god, a personification of Venus. And in the King James Bible, the Latin word for phosphorus was used to once again describe Venus. That word was Lucifer. Somewhere down the line, Christians personified that star as an evil entity, and Lucifer became the name of Satan. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more amazing history. See you next time. Bye.